Hi, I'm Kyle from Redo Tool located in Owasso, Michigan. In this video, I'm going to introduce, explain, set up, and show you how to maintain the PB2500N battery tool from Stanley Engineered Fastening. As a repair technician, I see this tool being used a lot in the solar industry to install solar panels using the quarter inch Stanley needle bolts, huck bobtails, and Michon fasteners. I'm going to start by saying for each individual brand of fastener, there's a specific nose assembly needed for proper installation, all of which we stock. This is the Stanley Neal Bolt Fastener with a Stanley Collet, Stanley Nose Housing, and a Stanley Anvil. This Collet has got a single tooth ledge in here, which is designed for this fastener. This Huck Bobtail, this Collet, is double toothed, so it will not work with the Stanley Fastener. Now the Michon Fastener is a different length and the collet is a different length. It does look identical to the Stanley, but it will not pull the Stanley needle bolt. Again, this is based on the specific fastener you intend to use. First, we'll set up the tool. For this demonstration, I'm gonna be using the Stanley's quarter inch needle bolt for my fastener and Stanley's quarter inch nose assembly on the front of this tool. Here are the components. So we have the base tool, the battery, the nose housing, the anvil, the collet, and the nose housing nut. Next, I'm gonna show you how to set the stroke setter. First, we're gonna remove the nose housing nut. We're gonna remove the nose housing and anvil. Now we're gonna remove the puller or the collet. Determine your application pin stick out length in millimeters. So I have a set of calipers. And for this demonstration, I'm gonna use three washers as my thickness. So what you wanna do is measure the remaining height you have. Caliper zeroed out. 17 millimeters of travel. So I'm gonna to refer to the manual on page 11 and it's telling me 10 clockwise rotations. So what I'm first gonna do is back the stroke setter flush with the clutch. You can see it's flush. And then I'm gonna go clockwise 10 rotations. And that should be set. Now we're gonna reassemble the tool. I'm gonna first screw on the collet. Pull back on the clutch, bottom the collet out, and then back until it clicks. Slide on your nose housing, the nose housing nut. And then you want to tighten these with a the wrench. Okay. Now that we have the stroke set up, we're going to go ahead and test a fastener real quick. We're going to slide the collar on. We're going to hold the fastener, making sure your fingers are out of it so it doesn't get pinched. And then we're going to go ahead and pull the trigger. Here's an example of the bad fastener setting. You can see that this metal is stripped off the top. You can fine tune the stroke setter if need be by sticking your two millimeter Allen wrench into the front end of the collet. You will need to increase the stroke for the stroke setter if it is over swaging, meaning pulling metal off the top of the pin. You need to reduce the stroke by turning the stroke setter clockwise. This is a very important step as it will keep your collets lasting longer and is not over exerting the tool. Now we'll talk about the daily service of the front end assembly. You'll want to do a general inspection and cleaning of the front end assembly daily, which consists of disassembling and cleaning. And for this demonstration, I am going to keep it on the battery. However, you do not want to keep it on the battery while you are doing this in the field. First, we're going to remove the nose housing nut. We're going to remove the nose housing and anvil. Now we're going to remove the 
puller or the collet. You want to look at the threads on the clutch and make sure there's no chips or debris on the head of this. And if there is, wipe it with a clean microfiber towel. Next, you'll want to inspect the collet and you'll want to check in all the cracks and crevices for chips or debris. If there is debris in there, you can wipe it out with a wire brush or blow it out with the compressed air. Next, you'll want to unscrew the nose housing and the anvil. You'll want to wipe the inside of the nose housing out, make sure there's no more debris with a microfiber towel. And you'll want to do the same for the anvil. Now, when you're done doing this, you're going to want to lube up the hole of the anvil and you're going to want to lube up the collet. You can use a non-stick dry film lubricant and just lightly coat it. Once this is all done, you can reassemble the tool. Now we'll be servicing the pulling head assembly. This is reverse threaded, so you will have to flip this tool upside down and clamp this in a vise, and then turn this right-handed to loosen it. And again, I am using this battery on this tool for display purposes only. Do not do this in the field. I've already went ahead and loosened this, so now we're gonna take it out. We're gonna pull the nose housing mass off. This is a brand new pulling head assembly, so I know it's clean. But if it was in the field and I was to take this apart, I would wipe this down with a microfiber towel, get all the old grease out of it, make sure there's no debris, um, chips, dirt, anything like that. Um, and then I would lube it back up with some Molly Coat G400 or an equivalent grease. So now I'm gonna remove what we call the back end. We're gonna pull that out. There's a wave washer in here that we're gonna pull out. We're gonna pull the thrust washer off. We're gonna pull the needle bearing off. And then we're gonna separate the clutch. And then we're gonna pull out the spring. Now it's empty. And we're gonna go ahead and wipe this all down with a microfiber towel. Again, this is a brand new tool, so I know this is all clean and greased, but if it was out in the field, I would wipe it off with a microfiber towel and put a thin coat of Molly Coat G400 grease or an equivalent. Next, we're gonna reassemble it. I'm gonna show you how to do that. We're gonna go ahead and push the wave washer in. We're gonna assemble the back end clutch. So we got the needle bearing or the thrust bearing, thrust washer, clutch spring, and the front clutch. Slide that into place. Make sure your keyway is in place. And I also have a little grease on it so it doesn't fall out. And we're going to slide it back in the tool and rotate it till it falls into place. Now that that's back in, I'm going to reinstall the pulling head. So what I like to do is get the ball screw in about the middle even on both sides, and I'll slide the mast housing back on the pulling head. And it slides in the, the keys. Once that's all put back together, put it in the front end, and then I'll rotate it left because it's reverse slatted. So I'm tightening it up right now. 
you'll feel it bottom out. And then you'll start hearing a, a click. And keep going until it's flush, tight. And then you'll want to tighten this up. Again, you'll want to put this in a vise upside down and you'll want to tighten this with a reverse torque wrench. So a left-handed torque wrench to 25 Newton meters. Here's a breakdown of the tool with part numbers listed. This tool comes with a one year manufacturer warranty. This will cover manufacturer defects. You can read more about the warranty info on page 23 of the instruction manual. If the tool is malfunctioning within the year, it is best to send it to Renew Tool for authorized warranty repair. Renew Tool is a leader in the industry for authorized POP, Avdel, and Stanley Tool warranty repairs. All internal parts of the tool need to be sent with the tool to submit for warranty. If parts are missing, the warranty will be void. Thanks for watching and remember Renew Tool for all of your POP, Avdel, and Stanley Fastening tools, parts, and service.